Do you need to provide a clean 48 volt DC supply at up to 8 amps to power power over Ethernet or PoE equipment? If so, in this video, I'm going to show you the simple filter board I designed just for this purpose. Let's get to the intro and start this video. Hi, this is Bill the Techno Gypsy coming to you from the Technog Command Center. In this video, I'm going to discuss a problem I was having with the output from a DC to DC converter and how I cleaned it up. I needed to provide a DC voltage of 48 volts to power a PoE switch from a 12 volt source. Knowing I would need a step up DC to DC converter, I was concerned as to how much switching noise would be generated on the 48 volt output. The PoE switch I'm using is mounted in a solar powered assembly comprised of a 180 watt solar panel, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, and a Renogy Rover 40 amp MPPT charge controller. The problem was the charge controller can only switch a 20 amp load. The 40 amps is for the maximum charging current to the batteries. You need to be careful and read the specs on charge controllers for switchable load versus battery charge current. This is a DC to DC converter I designed into the system. This is a SEC America model 649 HS DC to DC converter. It can provide up to 8 amps of current at 48 volts. According to the manufacturer's specifications, this can require up to 45 amps of current at the 10.8 to 30 volt input range, so it could not be directly connected to the solar charge controller. I will go into the design I came up with to meet these needs in the small solar powered deployable power unit video. For now, let's focus on the output from the DC to DC converter. By the way, this filter design is specific to this DC to DC converter. I tried using this converter on cheaper DC to DC converters like these and it did not clean up the output. These things generate an inductive spike from the switcher that is around 1.2 to 2 volts peak to peak. These spikes occur at the switching frequency of the DC to DC converter, which is usually between 100 kilohertz and 250 kilohertz. This DC to DC converter has a very clean output with 200 millivolts of ripple. This can be seen in the scope capture. But I wanted a cleaner output since it will be used to power data networking devices. Time to put on the thinking cap and come up with a filter design. This is the result. It is a very small device that can be inserted into the output power line of the DC to DC converter to clean up the waveform. The schematic for this board is pretty simple. I put a 1 microfarad capacitor across the input lines. The signal then goes through a dual wound choke to eliminate any common mode noise and then through another 1 microfarad capacitor across the output lines. I installed Anderson power pole connectors on the ends of the filter board for easy insertion into the power lines. Now let's take a look at the ripple both before and after the insertion of the filter board. The scope capture on the left shows the output ripple without the filter board. As you can see, it is around 200 millivolts peak to peak under load. The scope capture on the right shows the output ripple has been reduced to 20 millivolts peak to peak with the same load. I am much more comfortable with the DC ripple of 20 millivolts peak to peak powering data communications equipment. I have integrated this small board into all of my current PoE designs. Let's head out to the lab and I'll show you my test setup. Before I go over, the test setup that I used to test the DC to DC converter and the filter board, I wanted to give you a teaser as to what the completed deployable 100 amp hour solar power system looks like. Up here basically it's just a Renogy 40 amp MPPT charge controller. We come down, here is the filter board that we're going to look at on the test bench. It drives a Unify 8 port switch that has four PoE ports. This is just a 12 volt power distribution system. When I turn this around, you can see that this is our 100 amp hour lithium ion phosphate battery. Here's our DC to DC converter. 
Here's our fuse protect that we're using on the power system. And this is a battery monitor that is used to protect the battery from this load, since this thing can draw up to about 45 amps. But I will cover all of this in another video. So let's get into the test setup. I use both this DC power supply and a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery to provide the input voltage for the converters under test. This programmable DC load was used to place the test DC to DC converter under load. I recorded the resulting waveforms on the Tektronix oscope. This is a test setup I also used to test the capacitor board to see if it helped smooth out the waveform. By the way, the capacitor board was designed to support mobile radio implementations that were having problems during the initial stages of transmitting digital data from a battery supply. These little boards have 30,000 microfarads of capacitance, a fused power connection, and an isolation diode to protect from feeding back into the voltage source. I had the small 30,000 microfarad system built and also three that provide 45,000 microfarads of capacitance. So let's head back into the studio and wrap up this video. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found the information useful. If so, please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. This is Bill the Techno Gypsy saying 7-3 and God bless.